Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a little bit of a painting experiment. It's going to be also my last video of 2019. I was hoping to have a few more videos before I ended the year and I was hoping to have this one as a nice wrap up for the year. But unfortunately, as you may notice from my slightly dilapidated voice, I was quite ill <laughs> for a few weeks. And so um, it kind of derailed all my plans and um, the little energy I had, I had left, I spent packaging and shipping all your orders. So I didn't really have much left for anything else. So I'm really sorry, I was hoping to have a few more videos um, before this one came out, but unfortunately um, I wasn't able to do so. I suppose this video can count a little bit as a sort of sneak peek for a series I would like to do in 2020 where I explore my style in depth. I am still very much in the burgeoning stages of my career and I'm still very much at the stage where um, I think it's very essential for me to explore a lot and experiment a lot and to find a style that really really resonates with me. I strongly believe that an artist goes through that for their entire career, I don't think there's an end point to that kind of research but I think in the first stages of being an artist, in the early stages of being a creative, it's something that's particularly important because obviously once you've worked for a very long time you'll definitely have very strong preferences, the things that kind of really make your heart sing when you create them. But early on in, in a career I think it's something that can be a bit fuzzy and I'm definitely at that stage where on one side I know exactly the kind of concepts and the kind of themes I like to explore but when it comes to actually recreating them from my mind I am unsure as to what direction I want to take, I'm, much, I'm unsure as to what choices I prefer over others, I'm still very much a little bit confused about the kind of visual aesthetic I want the final idea to have. This is not something that worries me, this is not something that I find particularly problematic, it's just something that I'm excited to explore further in 2020. And for that I want to do a lot of exercises, a lot of experiments, I want to get out of my comfort zone, I want to experiment with things that I have never tried before, and I also want to try things out that I never thought I would actually like, um, and so never tried. And this video is a little bit like this. I, I, There are some colours in my repertoire that you may have noticed I don't use very much. I'm not much of a pastel person, I'm not much of a bright pinks and bright yellow person. I'm not much of a, um, <laughs> a kind of joyful colour person, I suppose you could say. <laughs> So something that I wanted to try today was shove myself out of what's comfortable for me, not use the colours that I would usually pick out from my array of tubes of gouache and pans of watercolours and actually for go for the colours that I would usually use very minimally, almost not at all, and just use those. So I'm only going to use the colours that I find scary. I'm, going to, I'm only going to use the colours that I'm profoundly uncomfortable with and I tried creating two little landscapes with those colours. I did use some reference pictures but I strayed quite far away from the original colours from these images. In the first image, as you see, um, it's not terribly different because I needed something to ease myself into it. <laughs> but I still tried to push my comfort zone a little bit further than I would usually do. I would go a lot darker than I did in the image and I would not use that kind of pastel colours by any means. And then in the second image I completely deviated from the original colours and I only used the reference image as a way to have a value guide and not as a way to have a colour guide. So I used reference image to make sure that I wasn't completely terrified by the whole process but I tried to keep to the weird colour palette that I decided for myself. So something that I definitely want to explore and learn a lot more about um, in 2020 is colour. Colour is something that I'm obviously not a complete new bat, I have been painting for quite a while, I know my basic colour theory, <laughs> but it's definitely not something that comes to me very naturally and it's not something that I have a natural instinct for and a natural skill for. For example, sketching comes to me a lot more easily 
than um, coming up with colour combinations or trying to find uncon unconventional ways to paint something. It's definitely something that I admire a lot in uh, people like James Jean or like Audrey Eau Claire, people that work with intense colours. It's something that I feel is almost unattainable for me. But part of the reason why I feel it's so unattainable for me is because I'm so scared of it that I don't really try it. And a lot of the time when I have learned important lessons in my art in the past is because I've done something that I was uncomfortable with, so I definitely want to do that with colour. And this video is, is exactly that, it's an exercise in me trying to use colour in a way that I'm uncomfortable with in the hopes of kind of learning new things, opening new doors for myself and even if I end up not liking it, the chances are I will have learned something in the process and chances are also that um, I might like some small aspects of it even if I don't like necessarily the experience of using those colours or if I don't like the results of using those colours, it doesn't mean that I won't have liked some part of the process that I can then integrate into my greater practice. In order to start experimenting with colour and try and build myself a series of exercises that I would like to do in the future, I've been using the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, to try and watch a few refresher videos on colour theory and immerse myself in the basics concepts again and basically try to bring all the knowledge back to my mind. Skillshare is sponsoring this video as I mentioned and if you're not familiar with their service, they're basically an online course platform. They have a lot of different courses on a lot of different topics. I personally have been using a few of their um, graphic design and illustration videos for the purposes of learning more about colour. I find that graphic design in particular is a practice that uses colour theory heavily. And I have always found that watching graphic design tutorials and courses has always helped me understand more technical aspects of art and there's always a lot of knowledge that I can transfer back to illustration and fine art. Two of the Skillshare videos I've particularly enjoyed for the purposes of research in colour were Expressing Emotion with Colour Theory by Dominic Flask and Iterating with Shape, Style and Colour by Aaron Traplin. I thought these were really entertaining and just really well put together courses and um, I just learned quite a bit. And then also I've been watching a lot of um, Colour Masterclass by Victor and Guy. I did mention it in my previous Skillshare video but I genuinely really like that course. It has inspired me and kind of energised me to want to research colour more and experiment with painting with colour more and so I just thought I'd mention it again because it's, it's definitely a strong recommendation from me. Um, I'll have more links in the description below to some of the courses I watched when I wanted to kind of give myself a bit of a refresher on colour theory so if you're interested in learning more about that topic there's a few recommendations in the description. Below. If you'd like to check out any of those courses, if you're intrigued by their content or if you're intrigued by Skillshare in general, there's a link in the description below that you can use to get two months of premium membership on Skillshare for free. Um, premium membership on Skillshare isn't very expensive anyway, it's about, I think it's about $10 a month if you get the annual membership, which does make it a pretty affordable service and they do have quite a few decent courses on there. So I'd recommend checking it out if you can and you don't have to commit to anything, you can just use the link and um, check it out for yourself. Using those courses to learn a bit more about colour and generally get a refresh on colour theory really energised me to try this exercise I did in this video where I used colours I was uncomfortable with but I'll be honest the process of actually painting was quite jarring and um, although I always have that stage when I paint where I get very demoralised and I get very frustrated and there's always an ugly stage that I feel I'll never get out of it was particularly virulent when I did those little paintings um, so many times I just wanted to throw my sketchbook through the window. I it's oh, it's difficult to paint with something that you find you have very little affinity towards and that's bright colours for me. I have little affinity towards bright colours. I do love a lot of artists who work with very bright colours, but I love even more artists who don't work with bright colours and so it was it was a tough exercise. <laughs> but you know, I persevered and I think I really like the results. They give me a peaceful feeling, I really like the look of the bright colours, there's something really happy about it, but it doesn't feel like I'm looking at my work. I don't find myself in it. So the process was really interesting, I'm really happy I tried the exercise because I feel like for some reason it kind of really helped me learn about colour, it helped me kind of readjust my instincts, it helped me avoid overthinking because if I started overthinking I would probably make the wrong choices, it helped me lean into my instincts 
rather than try and think about theory too much. It was it was it was a really really cool exercise and I want to do it more. I want to use colours I'm not used to more. So I definitely be doing this again because I find it that it actually helps me feel more confident in my art and just means that I don't have as many blind spots. But doing the exercise has confirmed that this is not the aesthetic I want for my general or more personal work. Um, I do want it as an exercise but not something to apply to my um, visual aesthetic for my bigger portfolio. Um, it resonates with me on a basic level of it's pretty but it doesn't make me excited if that makes any sense it doesn't it doesn't make me want to create bigger more personal pieces in that technique and that's just you know process of elimination I needed to create those pieces to realize just how strongly this is not my style um, and also to learn bits of things that I can pull from. I want to learn how to think differently when I look at a reference picture. I want to be able to veer away from realism and I want to be able to have unconventional colour choices, which I think this exercise will definitely help me do. But I also know that I don't want my work to be just pastel colours, just joyful colours. I know I want more contrast, I want darker colours and it's just helped me reaffirm that I love darker colours and more muted colours, not because it's what I'm necessarily more comfortable with but genuinely because it's something that I personally get excited by and want to create with. And I definitely think that that's one of the really good elements of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. It helps you readjust what you really love um, and kind of um, determine whether you've stuck with a, with a certain aesthetic because you were just comfortable with it and therefore it was the easiest path to take or because it's genuinely something that resonates with you and so that's partly what I want to do with these exercises and stepping out of the kind of work I usually do I want to try and test whether the choices I usually make in my work and the things I am naturally more um, more inclined to do are such because I am more comfortable doing them and therefore it's easier for me to choose them or because they are genuinely what I love creating, if that makes any sense. Anyway, I think um, I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed these little paintings. I realise they're very different from the kind of content I usually create but I want to experiment with things and I probably have a little series on experimenting with my style in 2020. Um, in the meantime, let me know how you are, let me know how your 2019 went, let me know how Christmas is for you, if it's difficult, if it's something that you're looking forward to, um, let me know what you're hoping for 2020. I will have some videos about my plans, um, a recap of what everything I created in 2019 and stuff like that in January, so I look forward to sharing that with you. And in the meantime, I by the time you see this, I will have flown back to France to visit my family for a few weeks, so I hope that you guys are really well, I hope that you are um, doing well, that you are feeling okay, that you have loved ones around you. Thank you deeply for being here with me and um, I'll see you very 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 soon. Have wonderful holidays, a really wonderful new year and take really good care of yourself everyone. See you soon, bye!